Good morning. Uh, God, no? yeah, yeah. It's um it's really a challenge to do a talk early this early you know, on a Saturday. Yeah. Is it a Saturday too? Yeah. Yes, but peace now. Okay, right, good morning everyone. Um welcome to day two of Pi City Con. Do you look familiar? <laughs> okay, um today I'm gonna talk about branding for millennials. Actually, how do we market for millennials? But before that I'll do an introduction first of who I am. Um I work for a company, uh, a big company called Denso Ages Network. It's the, one of the biggest uh, marketing um, group in the world. I think we're the third biggest in the world. And I, I, I manage a small group called Dojo. Uh, Dojo is like the millennial agency in the big, in the big group. So um, just to give you guys a, a, a background on Dojo. So this is me. Uh, I'm Joey Ong. I'm a creative. I worked in several big agencies uh, before I founded Dojo. So I used to work in J. Walter Thompson, TBWA, Publicis, Ogilvy, Bates, DDB. Basically, I did the rounds in so many different agencies in Manila before I decided to start my own company called Dojo. Okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, millennials. Everyone here is probably familiar with that term. I'm sure you guys hear it a lot. And I can see that there are a lot of you guys here who are actually millennials. And who's, who's a millennial here? Can you raise your hand? I almost made it. I was actually born in 1979. Um, so I'm kind of like a millennial in a way because, you know, malayo ba? <laughs> okay. So feeling millennial lang ako. Okay. So who are millennials? Before I start my presentation, let's try to understand first who we're really talking to. What I did was I started, um, I created an anatomy of a millennial. If you notice, you know, millennials are the ones with facial hair. Why, why do millennials like growing beards? Because they want to be taken seriously, diba? Because bata pa sila, and you know, they want to be, you know, perceived as someone who's more mature. So they grow beards, you know. And that's, that's pretty new. We, we never had that during my time. The camera phone, always walking around with a camera phone because you millennials want to capture every moment, diba? You want to create a story for everything that you experience. Cool kids, you know. I can still remember when I was young, Nike only had like eight different kinds of shoes. Running shoes, basketball shoes, workout shoes. And now there are so many cool kicks. Like all these millennials have really, really nice sneakers. And they even collect shoes. What else about millennials? Fake glasses. You know, I've seen a lot of millennials with, actual, with fake glasses. You, but, so some don't even have a lens, you know. It's just a frame, you know. To look smart, right? Because you want to be taken seriously. Because I think the market is really underestimating this mark, this this demographic. You know, people think that you know they're young and you know they shouldn't take them seriously. Walking with laptop, I've seen it a lot in my office. Like they're working and they're walking around, you know, in, in their laptop. You know, that's pretty new. We, we never did that before. Uh, I call it nut huggers. You know what that means? You know, it's like you woke up and you picked up a pair of jeans and you realize that it's your mom's pala. It's so tight. I can't believe you can actually walk around like wearing jeans that tight. You know, it's such a millennial thing. And of course, the, the noise blockers, you know, walking around with earphones. Um, you, you see a lot of people with like, you know, uh, beats walking around, but actually, while, while they're blocking off the noise around them, they're, they're watching something that's also considered noise, like, you know, like, um, like an online content, like a YouTube video. And of course, the branded coffee. Like, that's such a millennial thing, walking around with your Starbucks or your Seattle's Best, which is outside. I just want to promote um, one of the brands that we handle. And then SBC, by the way, they have really good coffee. Uh, okay, so that's a millennial. If you're born between 1980 to, to, to the year 2000, you are considered a millennial. So I almost made it. Okay, so this, this article came out in 2012. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. Uh, 2012, 2012 was the time we realized that there was such a thing as a millennial. And if you notice the way it was described, uh, millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents. Back in 2012, we, the, the, the marketing industry got shocked with this type of, these type of people. We didn't know how to handle them. We, we were so you know, um, awed by how they are. So we judged them so early. And if you think about it, it's actually the biggest generation ever. I think there's 25 billion millennials now in the world. So it's a market that we really have to take seriously. 
anywhere, you know, especially here in Cebu, I'm pretty sure you guys are encountering it. If, you're, if you work in marketing, I'm sure you guys are dealing with a lot of millennials. If you work in an office, you probably work with millennials. That's another challenge. How do you work with millennials? That's actually challenging for us, much older ethos. That's what they call us. <laughs> but now, the way we describe millennials, um, they're confident, they have very high expectations, achievement-oriented. So you guys have to give yourself a round of applause for actually becoming this. Can you guys at all? All the millennials in the room. You know, because ito yung pangarap ng lahat ng Pinoy dat, ng tao dati. We, we want it to be this. And now you guys have achieved it. So it's a pretty challenging thing. Um, look at this picture. Do you guys um, notice anything weird about it? This is a normal scene, right? This is something that we see every day. Do you guys see anything at all? No one's, everyone's looking down. No one's, everyone's looking down. So if you work, if you're, if you're from an out-of-home company, if you do billboards, it's pointless. But like, who would see your billboard if everyone, your whole market is just looking down? They're looking at their phones, they're looking at their tablets. So if you're from marketing, if you're doing a campaign, it's very challenging to actually do the traditional stuff. Because this is, this is what's happening now. Here's another picture. Um, this for me is the perfect example of, of how the market is. Uh, what you see on your screen, how people portray themselves is different from who they really are. Right? Do you guys agree? You know, iba yung profile picture mo sa totoo, di ba? Kaya pag nag-blind date ka, bilang you get shocked, you know, parang, hey, I didn't expect that. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if, you, if you work in marketing, this is a big challenge because what we see, what we think we know, is actually different from who the market really is. So, so these are challenges that we have to face in marketing to millennials. Okay? <coughs> so the title of my presentation today is Marketing to Millennials. I actually uh, change it a bit. Mind my brand, please. Do you know that uh, millennials have a shorter attention span than a goldfish? Have you guys ever heard about that term? Uh, it's true, right? You know, like we have split second. You have to capture a person's, uh, your brand should capture their interest in less than what, five seconds? And if you make something on social media, it has to be attractive enough for them to actually click on it. Because there's just so many, so much information out there for you guys to consume. So mind my brand, please. And that's the challenge today. You know, if you work for any type of business, what you need to do is to actually get their attention. Because you're competing with everyone else, you're competing with um, all the other apps, all the other platforms that they're, that they're using. All right. So, in Dojo, we created a certain process. These are, these are some examples of what we do. Um, by the way, in Dojo, we're actually, um, we started off like an advertising agency that we moved on and we evolved. Um, if you notice earlier, it says creative storytellers. Um, the reason why we started calling ourselves storytellers is because advertising for me is already, a, it's already dead. It's something that's, that, you know, that's old and something that you know, my titos are doing. I think today we're all about storytelling. Everything that we do is all about content. Everything that you consume is a story. Right, do you guys agree that you know we're, we're all consuming stories every day? Okay, so the dojo way, this is how we do it. And I'll show you guys some examples of some campaigns that we've done. Some of them you might have seen, some of them uh, could be familiar. Okay. The first thing you need to do, the dojo way is, do something you've never done before. Everything has been done, everything has done. If you're brand, if you're marketing something, and you've tried everything that you think didn't work, then do something different. <coughs> Challenge yourself and be brave. Like this, we did something for one of our brands. In the past years, Kenny Rogers has turned into a brand that most people think of as old, a forgotten brand from the 90s. But lately, things have been heating up inside the stores and in social media. This brand has completely dropped using TV and has found its unique way to utilize digital to change its image and bring in business growth. Kenny Rogers, for the vast majority of people who know about the brand, is known for its flame roasted chicken, which is actually just one of the many items in its menu. So how do we make people talk about us when everyone already knows about our awesome chicken? How do we attract a new market to come in and try Kenny Rogers? Why not sell everything else except the roasted chicken. 
grilled steak, sausages, burger, ribs, chicken fillets, and fish have been in the menu for years, yet no one really knows much about them. Until Kenny Rogers Grill Fest, a campaign that highlights the not so new but deliciously healthy items in the menu that people hardly know about. We started with an online video featuring our ambassadors Solen and Nico. This was followed with a push on social media and digital outdoor. The results were phenomenal. Digital engagement of 2 million views and 14,000 reactions. The best part? 700% growth in sales. Yes, you heard it right. 700%. The business growth was so awesome that it didn't even affect our roasted chicken sales. So all in all, we grew our fan base online and increased our new customer base to a younger market who equally loves our roasted chicken and greatest grills. Grills go wild. Have you guys seen that video? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash it so you guys can see. Babe, where are you? I mean, everyone's here, they're all okay, here. Okay, no problem. Okay, already? Ready? Okay, fine, but where's the food? Well, I gotta get that. The secret to our Sina grill is the meat. I will take. Boom. I will rip. Boom. And now, grill is going wild. So we decided to you know, do a full campaign without selling chicken. And imagine 700% growth in their business. And it didn't even cannibalize the chicken sales. So with, with that, you know, they attracted the new market. And we used, we used this campaign. We didn't do in any TV. We didn't do any ATL. This, was, this just came out on social media. We just used Instagram and Facebook to launch it. And it, you know, it drove a lot of business for them. And of course, we used Solen and Nico, which you know, everyone loves, I guess. Everyone knows the, the couple. And um, so that's it. You should do something that you've never done before. So that that was a, such a big thing for the brand, you know. Okay, let's not sell chicken for this whole month. Yeah, Next is, um, I think if you want to sell to a millennial, you should stop selling the product. No one loves, no one, no one, everyone hates hard sell. You know, when you see someone like flashing like, buy this, buy a burger, or buy that, you know, you don't, you, you totally ignore it. You totally ignore it on your feet. So what we do is we tell a story. Um, it's better to tell a story because people remember a story better than a natural product. It all started at the roaster's farm. There was this funny pig, Ballsy, who befriended the chick, Saucy. From the moment I laid eyes on Saucy, I knew we were meant to be together. They were inseparable. They enjoyed playing together and eating together, and soon, they fell in love. Life was perfect. But then, everyone was talking about it. They couldn't believe what was happening. Saucy's father did not approve. But I love Ballsy! You can't be with her, said Ballsy's dad. No! Good thing I was there. Masa Patato! I told him about this enchanted volcano. Legend has it that anyone who jumps in the crater will be granted eternal love. And so, Olsi and Saucy left the farm. The journey was epic and tiring, but it made them closer to each other. No danger could make them stop until they finally found the enchanted volcano. They shouted, 
Introducing Kenny's Beef Bacon Roast. Flavorful chicken wrapped in bacon that's awesome together. Only from Kenny Rogers Roasters. Anyway, you guys didn't see that coming, did it? So, it, it, it's a very nice story because, you know, the clients and us, we, we sat down, they told us about the product. Okay, we're going to make a chicken that's wrapped in bacon. Of course, my team were like, oh, just come up with something crazy. Because, you know, it's already a good product to begin with. We just needed a good story to back it up. So we decided, why don't we do, why do, why don't we do animation? Since everyone loves animation, not the man now. Then we came up with this, Saucy and Bozzy will be back. They didn't really die, by the way. They went inside an enchanted volcano. So now if you follow the Kenny Rogers page, you're actually going to see them traveling the world. Like a honeymoon na sila, Saucy and Bozzy, because, you know, they're now in love. Okay. Um, doing something like that uh, was pretty bold for a brand. Uh, we told the story. We did, you know, the product was like what three seconds. You know, you didn't see it. But the story drove a lot of business to the to the stores. Imagine this. Medyo malabo lang siya. But uh, uh, the ones that I, I circled, uh, these are comments from some celebrities. Like Mark Nelson said, "Holy crap, this is so good. Loved it. Loved the episode." Um, we have comments here like, you know, awesome together, matikman nga yan, or I wanna try it. Uh, we have comments like, you know, I love the video so much, it's the best thing I saw on IGTV. So we were, we were creating a story that would actually drive people to the store, and because of that curiosity, people are actually trying. This, this product is actually selling really, really well. It's hitting the target so much. Okay, so that's another example of what you can do. Tell a story, stop selling your product, but tell a story about your brand. Uh, the third one is, um, Use social media wisely. Um, any marketing people here? Are you guys using social media? Who's using Facebook for your brand? Anyone here using Facebook? What do you guys do with your Facebook? Do you guys um, create content, right? The typical, you create content, you make a, an ad, and you post it, and you guys um, answer questions and stuff. What What happens there if you, if you treat your social media like that? Like you kayong parang complaint center. You know, these people will just keep on messaging you about complaints, about inquiries, you're not really creating a relationship with your clients because you're just becoming um, a way for them to, you know, to write stuff about you and complain and, you know, ask questions. What we did um, for this one, I'll give you an example for one of the brands that we handle. Um, we handle um, Nisin Yakisoba. If you guys are familiar with it, I'm pretty sure everyone has tried this once in, you know, in your college life. You know, it's a dorm. Dorm food tour, eh. para pag mag group study, di ba? Para yakisoba talaga kina kain ng mga tao. Um, this is a brand that we started handling a couple of months ago. Okay. Um, we were able to increase the page likes by 200%. Yakisoba stopped doing advertising. We just concentrated all their budgets on social media. And I'll show you how we were able to change the way we handle their page. There was a 9% business growth you know, in, a, in a matter of six months. Okay? The lesson here is really you should treat your social media as a channel ra rather than a page. When I say a channel, it should be a venue where people can actually get entertained. They should see something that they like. Um, they should be able to react or actually be engaged with your, with your brand. This, this is how we did it. Uh, we started creating content like this one. Introducing um, new ways for people to actually consume. So what we did was we introduced um, new ways of consuming the product because we're all you know we tried it you know it, it became like a regular thing. Uh, what we did with the pages we turned it into like a tasty. 
or like you know a, a page where if you want to look at a recipe, if you want to try something new for the weekend, you go to the yakisoba page and you look at the, the the recipe for this week. Then we created a cycle where in the recipe that we create today, in a couple of days, it's going to turn into a post, and people can actually react to it. And even the way we handle the way people reacted to them, um, this is a very good suggestion. Don't be a chatbot. Um, we're all familiar with the chatbot. You know that it's a template. You know that it's a it's a script. Uh, people hate that, right? When you when you get a, when you ask something and you get a response that's like you know automated, you, you stop your engagement already. Uh, so build relationships with your community, and this is how we did it. Um, if you go to the Yakisoba page now, you'll notice that um, people started reacting using GIFs. We introduced the GIF conversation. So, pag sumagot ka ng GIF, sasagutin ka din ng brand ng GIF. And it feels very personal because every GIF that we respond to you feels like, you know, it's customized. So, consumers now, we have like really, really long trails of GIFs, you know, answering. Like, you know, sarap niya, sasagutan. And you know, we're not afraid, we're not afraid of the competition, you know. Some people would even say, lucky me, pansit kanton, mas masarap. Then we would react with the GIF. Like that one, parang galit siya, yun, kasi nag-notice ka ng ano, nag-post ka ng lucky me. So this way, um, our community manager responds to the market in a very personal way. So feeling mo tuloy ngayon, or you know, if you feel like, you know, the brand is really interested in you. So this is how we do it, this is how we respond. The next, the next one is um, always be on the lookout for the next big uh, moment. Um, if you guys are familiar with moment marketing, you, you guys have probably experienced it. Um, always have a team ready, looking for the new, looking at news, checking out the, um, you know what's happening in the world. This thing happened really fresh. It happened last week. I'm not sure if any of you guys saw this. You know, uh, we were the first, one of the first few brands who reacted to it. You know. I think we were probably the second next to Ankas. You know. When we posted this, we got like 99,000 views already in the span of one hour. It got shared all the way to FHM. Um, all, the, all the blog sites are actually featuring it. Uh, but what's interesting about it is the story behind the creation of it. Like I was sitting in my office, I was with my team, then we saw the, the logo. And we said, oh, so yeah, why don't we do something? You know, why don't we create one? You know? In less than 30 minutes, we called up the client, we told them, hey, we're gonna do something. Uh, is it okay? So we created it, we sent it. In less than 30 minutes, it was up. After two hours, people were sharing it already. Um, 61,000 um, likes, 3,000 shares. Imagine that for one single post. It, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty big for something static like this. Okay, another important thing is you have to listen to your market uh, because Engagement is all about listening. Who's a Pokemon fan here? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are Pokemon fans here. Okay, so we posted this. Apparently, uh, for millennials, my millennial team showed me this 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 meme, and we're like, "Oh, again, let's do something about it." When we posted it, I choose you, evolve kamuna. People started reacting. May nagpakita ng gem, parang I guess it's a Pokemon geek thing. Like you know, you can't evolve without this gem. So my team reacted to our God. We created it, we changed it, we created the gem naman. So, so the, the market started seeing that, you know, hey, the brand is actually reacting to us in real time. And that actually creates a better engagement for your brand. Okay, you can also create your own influencer. I think that's very important. Another thing that we did for Tisin Yakisoba pages, because we turned it into a channel, Oh, 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 oh,
that video to get in trouble. We wanted to change the way people look at Kenny Rogers from being the old boring brand that you that people used to know in the 90s. So we wanted to change it. So we created that material because we wanted to get into trouble and people were going to complain because we had a story to tell. So we launched that a week before. If you notice, there was no branding. There was just that incidental fact. Because a week later, for those animals, show all that shit. Okay, he goes up here. I think this might be the day we're looking for. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop everything, stop everything. There, can I work? Babe, what are you doing? You have to be sexy. Let me show you. Pack, 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 I know. What did it? Oops. I did it again. Pose. The fast makes it more dramatic. You talk to the chicken, eh? Chicken and you is one. It's an extension of your arm. These are your wings. This is how you do it, baby. That's how you do it. First, to be an endorser, you dress like an endorser. So there, um, those are the things that we do. Um, I think the, the last example is really the most important one. Be daring enough to do something crazy that you think you might get in trouble with, but at least you know have, have a backup. That one, we, if, we, if we were gonna get into trouble, at least we had that video to, to justify the reason why we did it. So that's how we dojo. That's how we do it in dojo. I hope you guys learned a lot. You can follow me, at, um, that's my Instagram or my Facebook thing. If you guys wanna ask me anything, um, you guys can message me. 
Thank you. Uh,